All right, Fresh, let's go to another noon kickoff game. You talked about all of the great stuff that is going on at noon right now here for Saturday. The upstart Maryland Terrapins. Maryland is 5-0 and on the year, and they're going to travel to Columbus to face the Ohio State Buckeyes. Ohio State's had a week off coming off of that huge win versus Notre Dame. Uh, Ryan Day calling out Lou Holtz, uh, Lou Holtz because uh, he did some fate. What a lot of people no- don't know is that Ryan Day did a lot of favors for the Holtz family and Trey Holtz's coaching career, uh, which is one of the reasons why he took it. You know, why did Ryan Day take it so personally? Yeah, I helped out your grandson, you jerk. And now you want to take shots at me? Hey, thanks for that. I'll remember that next time. Maryland's a dangerous team, Fresh. Maryland's been on the rise. Great offense over there uh, in the Baltimore area. You take a look at this. They're dangerous because they don't have that signature upset. We take a look at any rising team, any team that is on their way up, and especially in the Big Ten East where it just seems like you got to break through that glass ceiling that is uh, Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State. They need an upset. This is the one where if, if they upset Ohio State, all of a sudden, Maryland is going to be taken very, very seriously. I'll turn it over to you, Fresh. What do you got for me? I mean, first off, if Maryland was in the, S- the Big Ten West, they're, they're shooing for the Big Ten title game. That's how good this football right. team is, folks. But you are the fourth best team in the Big Ten East, where the three, three of the top ten, th- top nine programs in the country all reside. And at one point, you mentioned it, you've got to at least beat one of them to get to that next level, to get to that next step. Mike Loxley has been at Maryland now for a while, and he has actually built this thing from the ground up, a core program, guys who want to be there, want to play hard, um, but does not have that one win to set them to that next level, to really get the recruits to truly all grasp it and say, you know what, we actually have a chance of winning. Because it's only going to get tougher once all the teams from the Pac-12 become in the Big Ten next year. That, that reign of opportunity of winning and competing for a title is very, very small right now. It's going to get smaller then. So you know what? Why not us at this point? You put it all in there. Take advantage of it. Go get the W. You have the offense to do it. Talia Tagovailoa, if you haven't figured it out, that's Tua's younger brother. He has had an amazing couple seasons there, and this year is even better than what he's done before. He is making great reads. He's hitting the receivers in stride, getting out of the pocket, being able to manipulate on the run. Can he have an upset-minded game in him? They almost got him last year. It was 33-30 to 30 with, what, nine minutes to go in the ballgame there in College Park? And then a couple things happened where Ohio State was able to survive. This team has shown they can compete at a high level. You just you got to get over that hump now. So what does Mike Loxley, what does you know, Talia have? What does this offense, what does this defense, what does the entire Terrapin program have that they can put together to take out one of these teams, whether it's Ohio State this week on the road in the shoe Maybe get Michigan, maybe get Penn State, but you've got to get one of them this year to really supplant yourself going forward and showing this program is a, a viable option for the future of the, you know, of the school and really a football program. They've really got it completely turned around. Terps are 5-0, and 2-1-0 oh, oh in the Big Ten, but here you go. The next three of the next six are against the Bigs. So you've got to find one. You've got to figure it out. You're going to probably go to a bowl game. I don't see this team not winning today and then not winning the rest of the year. You have five wins. You get one more. You're in a bowl. It's great. But can you get that nine win, that 10 win season, taking out one of the big teams? Where does this team get it? Do you take a sleepy Ohio State team coming off a bye week? Who just, hey, you know what? We beat Notre Dame. It's Maryland. Whatever. We'll survive. We got Penn State coming in a couple weeks. We got Wisconsin a couple weeks after that. Maybe you catch them and they're not paying attention to you. You've got to take advantage of every opportunity, every drive. Manipulate it, possess the football, keep that, that offense for Ohio State on the sideline. Um, this is what you have to handle. Maybe you don't always try to score them, but change the game. Take the air out of it a little bit. Look what Indiana did in the opener. Yes, Ohio State was trying to get their feet wet under McCord, but Indiana took the air out of the ball game for the first three quarters and really made it very sloppy and ugly in limited possessions. If you can limit possessions here, Work it down. You have the better, you know, a, a much more experienced quarterback compared to McCord. Maybe late in the football game, he makes a throw to win you the football game. Change the narrative on Ohio State. Don't try to play at their pace. Make them play at yours, and that may be how you get the upset. Now, upsets you're also going to have to force turnovers. You're going to have to get a couple lucky breaks. But offense, you know, you're going to make sure it travels and puts up points in key situations, touchdowns, not field goals at all opportunities. Defensively, though, Maryland has been a little better this year from. 
the outside looking in. They have allowed 20 or less points in every single game this season, and the 20 that they did allow was to Charlotte. Yes, folks, the same Charlotte team that lost to Florida 22 to 7. So take that for what you will. It's not exactly the greatest offense that shows you how bad Florida is when they'll, you know, or Maryland's defense might have issues too. They give up 20 to that same team. So what, what turtle team shows up? Do they all, are they maybe looking ahead? Are they all fired up? Are they all locked in? Do they play too emotional, too many penalties? That's where I want to see how this team comes out in that first half, that first drive. Um, do you act a little jittery? Because there was some chippiness at the end of that last football game when you were getting close. How do you keep that yourself composed? Because penalties on the road leads to that, that crowd getting louder, punishing you, putting you in dark, you know, more tough situations to operate. You can't allow that Ohio State crowd to stay involved in a tight football game or even get you know more impactful if they're blowing you out. Because then you're completely just out of all sorts. you got to take the crowd out of that stadium, which is very, very, very tough to do anywhere, but especially in Ohio State. I mean, scoring touchdowns, taking the air out of it, five, six yards a clip, managing it drives you don't have to hit the 60 yard touchdown if you get six or seven yards of here and there you get the drives alive manipulate it you'll have success that way but you cannot turn the ball over do not shorten the field now it's all great easy perfect said and done but you're not playing the same ohio state defense that was there last year or a year before or the year before that this ohio state defense disgustingly good disgustingly good the names across of it, they tackle, they fly to the football, and they're on a mission because they know they had opportunities last year to really put things away and potentially win a national championship, and they didn't get it done. Maybe not all their fault, but they are focused and they're driven to handle it. And if they have to win ugly and small and low-scoring football games, they're going to do it. Look what they did in Notre Dame. They shut down one of the best offenses in the country. And they won 17-14, to 14, but they won the football game. The defense locked it down when they had to. You're going to have to really, really be perfect in your offensive philosophy to avoid getting sacked, get, turning the ball over, just having drives get stopped and snuffed out by this Ohio State defense because they're coming after you and they're focused, they're driven. And I think that's the biggest deciding factor is that you're playing a much better Ohio State defense where you're not going to get the fluke touchdown. You're not, you're not going to get the coverage breakdown. And that's where it's going to really kill you in the end where you're going to get frustrated. You're going to try like, man, I want that three-yard route. It's not there. I want that 10-yard route. It's not there. And you're going to try to make something happen, being too big of yourself, and you're going to throw it right into coverage, and Ohio State's going to get the pick. They're probably going to take it to the house, and you're going to be in a real serious hurting you know, piece of trouble. You've got to be patient with this team because this defense is so much better. They're going to drive you insane with giving you very, very little room to operate. I think Ohio State can win solely on their defense alone, but McCord and that offense are going to have to find something. We've got to see some improvement from Kyle McCord. He, was, he had okay moments for Notre Dame. But there were some times where balls were probably thrown with spots that shouldn't have been thrown. Where can we see progress from McCord? Um, I think that's also we want to see this football game. Does he grow up? Has he learned over the two weeks? Is he a little more confident now that he got the big W and that lift off his shoulders? Because if he can show progress and survive this football game, make some big boy throws, that sets him up for Penn State. That sets you up for Wisconsin. That sets you up for your meeting at the end of the year. But you've got to show progress week in and week out. And that's what I want to see from that Ohio State offense. Because I know the defense is going to do their stuff. I want to see what the offense can do, what can McCord can do. Can he grow up and take a next step? I think early on, it might be a little slow, sluggish start. But by the end of the football game, Ohio State will put it on. If they have to run it down their throat, they'll run it down the throat. But Ohio State will make a statement win, which is one thing that I don't think they truly have from a point blowout perspective against a Power 5 team. This will be that case. They'll blow out Maryland. They will cover the 18 and a half. I think they win by three touchdowns. The over-under will hit as well. I think Maryland scores maybe 17 points. But Ohio State handles the rest. They put on a show and say that that win over Notre Dame wasn't a fluke. This is a valiant national championship contender, and the Buckeyes get it done. Yeah, fresh. So I went back and I looked two years ago when C.J. Stroud was in his first year with Ohio State. People have a very short-term memory with a lot of things, and especially with a person like C.J. Stroud, you know, you get kind of, I don't want to say spoiled in, in a in a sense, but you get kind of used to seeing like this cons consistent, really good quarterback play. And they don't forget that Stroud struggled. Like he had a 400 yard game against Oregon, but he completed like only like 60, I want to say right at about 60% of his passes in it. It was the Maryland game that really you see Stroud start to truly take off. He has a huge game versus Maryland. They destroy Maryland 66 to 17 in that game. And it was just like, 
a launching pad for Shroud that year. Is is this the game that's the launching pad for Kyle McCord? Like again, if it was in in Maryland, I would be really, really nervous about this game. Maryland's got some really great talent there, and I don't expect Maryland to only put up 17 points in this game because they have four wide receivers that are threats. I know Denzel Burke has been playing out of his mind. He's been one of the best cornerbacks in the country right now, uh, completely locking down like almost the side of the football field there. But Maryland's got four wide receivers that are all six foot one or higher, and they've all averaged more than 10 yards per catch. Like so, these guys are throwing the ball downfield. They're move. It's a vertical passing game that Tagovailoa has been doing very well with them. This game screams to me Travion Henderson. As much as I like to say this is the game, Kyle McCord just blows up and, and just shows why he was a highly rated recruit coming out of high school and why he was Marvin Harrison's quarterback in high school. You take a look. I think this is a game where Travion Henderson. We've started to see like shows of this. Two years ago, we thought Travion Henderson was one of the best up-and-coming running backs in the entire country. This is a game where I feel like he goes for like a buck 50 and three touchdowns. This is one where he, he breaks it loose. The only concern I have on that is it, that they don't give him enough carries. They've been kind of spelling him with Mayan Williams, trip train him, what have you with him. The Ohio State defense, though, I look at them. Five sacks on the year. They've been a great defense. They're, I want to say, third in points for the year. But this defense really needs to get some pressure. This is a game where if you get after the quarterback, if you force the turnovers, force the pressure, guess what? Ohio State can win or run away with it. The spread is up to 19 and a half points. Originally, when I was taking notes, I have 18 and a half written down. And the over-under is up to 57 after opening or around 55 and a half. A lot of points to be, be scored in that fresh. I'm going to say I like Ohio State, and I actually like the over in this game for some reason or another, but I really do think Maryland in the points. That 19, I, and that's not a knock against Ohio State, huge Buckeyes fan, but that's a res- sign of respect towards Maryland. I think Maryland's got some great things going on, so give me – I take Maryland in the points, but I got Ohio State winning the game. If Maryland keeps it close, if I'm Michigan or Penn State, I take that as a warning shot. Like this team's coming, and they're and they're going to get somebody at some point. Um, it there's just too much talent. But you know what? If they lose all three of those games close and they finish nine and three in the regular season, does, does do you even give does Loxley get coach of the year in the Big Ten? Good chance. Hey, I looked at this too in twenty four. They they only have Michigan and USC on their schedule. They miss every other big hitter on their schedule next year. So they re- they could really set them. They win one of those two, and now you're looking at eleven and one Maryland team. Yeah, I mean that's interesting, right? That that's a twelve as well as a twelve team playoff spot right there. Yeah, I really do think so. I think Maryland. We we need to really keep an eye on Maryland. This could be if they win. And again, you go back to let me go back to the uh, thing about Michigan and Penn State. I think if Maryland can throw the ball on Ohio State, and I think if they can kind of, you know, let's say they lose in a shootout 45 35 here, 10 point loss, but they throw the ball for 350 yards, 400 yards. Both of those teams are run heavy teams that if Maryland goes, you need to keep up with us. You need to keep up with our points and, and us throwing the ball all over the field. And the great thing for Maryland, they get both Penn State and Michigan at home. Could make for very interesting games this year. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, man. Turtle there power. There you go. 